right, I need you to find these notes in your packet. So you can feel free to pause the video until you find them. Also feel free to pause the video at any time during notes so that you can catch up and make sure that you have all the materials necessary. I'll also encourage you to pause the video to try some practice problems. So, an introduction to systems of linear equations. This may be some review to you, um, as it is a Math 8 topic, but we do want to reteach and relearn some of these things. So, a system of linear equations consists of two or more linear equations that use the same variables. The solution to a system of equations is the point or points that make both or all of the equations true. Remember that a point is an ordered pair and that ordered pair starts with x and then y. And I am sorry, let me zoom out so you can see all of those. I didn't realize I was writing off the page for y'all. Adjust myself while y'all catch up on some notes. Okay, so we want to talk about this part up here. The solution to a system of equations is the point or points that make both of all the or all of the equations true. Well, we're going to test that out by substituting in some of these points. So this point is an x value and a y value. And you have a system of equations here that we can just simply substitute in that x and that y value. So I'm going to write it as such. I'm going to say 3 and I'm going to open up a set of parentheses plus 7. And I'm going to leave a blank and say 7. And that should be a negative y, so I'm just going to put plus a negative. So in this scenario here, I left open parentheses for my x and y values. So I'm going to substitute in a negative 3 for my x and a positive 3 for my y. And I want to evaluate these functions. So this is going to be a negative 9 plus 21 equal to 12. What is 21 minus 9? I hope you say 12. Is it true that 12 equals 12? Yes. However, just because it works for one does not make this true. It has to work for both. So let's check out this second equation here. So we have a negative 21 minus 3 equal to a negative 4. Is it possible for a negative 24 to equal 4? No. So I'm going to put an x here. That's not possible. So is this ordered pair a solution to my system? It is not. Not a solution. It did not make both equations true. So what I want to do is I want to encourage you to pause the video and try number two on your own. I hope you took the time to pause it because here are my answers. I, I put my work too close together. So here's me substituting in my points. And here's my solution. Negative 3 does equal negative 3. My second equation here where I substitute an x and y. And here's my solution. Both of these are true. So that makes this ordered pair, in fact, a solution. So when we talk about systems of equations, there are three types of solutions we can get, and there are three ways that we can find those solutions. So let's talk about those three ways. 
three types of solutions we can get. We could have one solution. We can have no solution. Or we can have infinitely many solutions. There are two ways that we can find these solutions. Okay. We can find these solutions graphically or algebraically. So I'm going to make um, a little bit of a chart here. I'm going to write graphically at the top. Kind of small so we can kind of see what's going on here. When we have one solution graphically, I'm going to have one intersection. My lines are going to cross at one point. If I have no solution, I'm going to have some parallel lines. My line should never cross. And if I have infinitely many solutions, that means they're the same line. I'm going to get something that looks like this. I graph the same line twice. So no solution, excuse me, one solution, no solution, and infinitely many solutions. We can also have or find solutions algebraically. So I'm going to make this little thing up here. Algebraically. Hi. Right. When we have one solution algebraically, that means we're going to get an x value and a y value. Okay, we're going to get an ordered pair. We're going to get a solution of x and y. If I have no solution, I'm going to get a number equal to a different number. Very similar to our first example that we did up at the top. That has no solution, or that particular point was no solution. If I have infinitely many solutions when I solve algebraically, I'm going to get a number equal to the same number. Now there are also two ways, two, two ways, three ways to solve these systems. We can solve them by graphing. We can solve them by substitution. And we can solve by elimination. And ironically, that's the way we're going to learn it. So this is the end of video one. Please start video two for the graphing systems of equations notes.